Hai, selamat petang semua. Uh, selamat datang ke webinar kita pada hari ini yang akan bermula jam 3. So, sekarang jam sudah menunjukkan 3.01. So, terima kasih kepada cikgu-cikgu ataupun peserta-peserta uh, yang hadir awal tadi. Kita kita start webinar tadi awal sikit untuk uh, untuk tunggu orang datang. So, sekarang jam dah mula menunjukkan jam 3. So, kita akan mula sekarang. So, selamat tengah hari cikgu-cikgu semua. Selamat petang. Saya harap anda semua sudah makan. Um, so, webinar kita hari ini kita akan fokus kepada topik uh, macam mana kita nak mengupayakan kepimpinan murid dan macam mana kita nak menjaga kesejahteraan mereka. Dan saya juga tahu sekarang uh, sekolah dah uh, sesi pembelajaran secara bersemuka dah tutup, uh, dah habis uh, for the rest of the year dan sekarang cikgu-cikgu dah mula untuk mengajar uh, untuk pembelajaran dari rumah. So memang uh, saya kami pun rasa topik ini amat bersesuaian bukan sahaja untuk kita lihat macam mana kita nak check in dengan pelajar kita supaya kesejahteraan mereka terjaga. Mungkin uh, perkongsian yang kita adakan hari ini, cikgu-cikgu juga boleh terapkan untuk diri cikgu dan keluarga cikgu. Okay, so uh, sebelum uh, sebelum saya pergi ke slide seterusnya, saya harap sesiapa yang ada di sini, mungkin cikgu-cikgu boleh tulis nama dan sekolah anda, uh, dari mana anda berada, kalau cikgu ataupun kalau anda bukan seorang cikgu ke, um, anda bekerja ke, anda ibu apa ke, anda juga boleh tulis lah di ruangan komen supaya kami boleh tahu siapa yang ada bersama kita pada hari ini. Okay. Okey, so seperti biasa, ini ialah panduan untuk kita supaya sesi kita berjalan dengan lancar hari ini. Yang paling penting sekali, um, saya harap peserta-peserta hari ini pastikan anda berada dalam suasana yang kondusif, selesa untuk kita jalankan sesi selama sejam ini. Um, dan ambil bahagian secara aktif dalam ruangan komen. So untuk sekarang saya uh, kita kita galakkan uh, siapa yang ada hari ini untuk kongsi nama dan sekolah. Um, tapi sepanjang sesi perkongsian oleh Dr Edward nanti, cikgu-cikgu adalah digalakkan untuk tanya soalan dan kita akan cuba jawab sedaya upaya pada akhir sesi ini. Okey dan uh, segala yang kita kongsi hari ini hanya sekadar perkongsian uh, uh, terutamanya dari pihak Dr Edward apa yang dia rasa cikgu boleh try uh, di sekolah ataupun um, kepada anak murid cikgu. So uh, memang ada banyak pendapat uh, kalau ada pendapat sila sila suarakan di ruangan komen macam mana pun kita kita pastikan kita hormati pendapat satu sama lain lah ya. Okey So uh, untuk uh, untuk peserta-peserta yang ada bersama kita pada hari ini, pada akhir sesi ini kita akan share link kepada um, borang maklum balas dan uh, sesiapa yang isi borang maklum balas ini terutamanya untuk cikgu-cikgu di sekolah yang terlibat dalam program test, kehadiran anda akan diambil dan anda juga akan dapat uh, isi je lah apabila anda isi borang maklum balas itu uh, nanti ya. Pada akhir sesi kita akan share link tersebut. Okay. So, uh, hi Cikgu Rogaya. Okay, nice to see you here. Okay, so seperti yang saya kongsi tadi, um, sesi kita hari ini, um, objektif utama kita ialah untuk kita bersama-sama mengenal pasti cara untuk memupuk ke 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 kepimpinan dan menjaga kesejahteraan murid. Terutamanya sekarang, sekolah tiba-tiba tutup uh, hari akhir, akhir sekolah ialah hari Jumaat dan pelajar pula tak ada masa untuk say bye to the teachers and to their friends. So, ini ialah cara kita lihat bagaimana kita boleh berikan sokongan emosi kepada anak-anak murid kita. Dan um, pada akhir webinar ini, dua perkara yang kami harap um, pelajar uh, Miss peserta okay, akan perolehi iaitu um, kita boleh bersama-sama kita boleh kenal apa itu uh, apakah yang di, dikatakan tentang perwatakan dan peranan pemimpin pelajar dan bagaimana kita boleh gunakan pendekatan pertolongan cemas psikologi ataupun dalam bahasa Inggeris psychological first aid uh, untuk berkomunikasi dengan anak murid kita kalau uh, bukan saja anak murid mungkin dengan rakan-rakan uh, kita yang memerlukan okey So uh, sebelum saya uh, bergerak ke sesi perkongsian uh, oleh Dr. Edward hari ini, um, ini ialah lima idea untuk mengajar di norma baharu yang kita sama ini uh, untuk uh, untuk cikgu-cikgu yang terlibat dalam program test kita sudah pun berkongsi sejak bulan Julai lagi dan uh, semua webinar yang kita yang kita kongsikan 
um, yang kita anjurkan dari bulan Julai sehinggalah sekarang ialah objektif dia lah untuk apa untuk memberi sokongan kepada cikgu supaya boleh terapkan lima idea ini. Uh, so kita pernah uh, kita pernah ada ke webinar tentang macam mana kita nak bekerja sama dengan ibu bapa. Kita pernah ada ke webinar macam mana kita nak gunakan pendekatan modular untuk melaksanakan PDPC kita dan untuk kita punya webinar hari ini kita harap perkongsian ini dapat membantu cikgu ataupun menyokong cikgu untuk membina hubungan yang positif dengan anak murid anda dan untuk juga uh, apa memberikan sedikit strategi tentang bagaimana kita boleh utamakan emosi mereka. Sebab untuk kita mengajar di norma baharu ini, sosial dan emosi sangat-sangat penting. Okay, well-being comes first, baru kita boleh lihat kepada pembelajaran. Sama juga dengan cikgu-cikgu semua hari ini, apabila kesejahteraan cikgu terjaga, saya pasti cikgu pun boleh melaksanakan tugas dengan efektif. Same for our students, apabila emosi mereka terjaga, kesejahteraan mereka terjaga, maka pembelajaran mereka pun akan mendapat impact yang uh, uh, impact yang positif lah. Okay. Dan ini ialah agenda kita hari ini. So, Dr. Edward akan datang dan berkongsi selama 45 minit dan pada akhir 10 minit kita ada akan adakan sesi soal jawab dan akan ada cadangan langkah seterusnya daripada pihak kami. Oleh itu, kami galakkan cikgu untuk tanya sebanyak soalan yang mungkin uh, dalam ruangan komen. So, Dr. Edward akan cuba jawab dan sekiranya terdapat beberapa soalan yang mungkin kita tak sempat jawab hari ini, kami akan kumpulkan soalan soalan tersebut dan dapatkan pendapat daripada Dr. Edward dan respon tersebut kami akan kongsikan melalui email. So, uh, just nak share kepada cikgu hari ini uh, untuk mereka yang sudah yang register melalui Google Form, kami sudah kumpulkan uh, secara keseluruhan enam soalan yang ditanya oleh peserta-peserta uh, yang mereka ingin uh, mereka ingin tahulah melalui sesi hari ini. Soalan pertama ialah berkenaan dengan kepimpinan. Adakah kepimpinan bermula dari rumah ataupun kita boleh pupuk, okey? Kalau kalau tak bermula dari rumah boleh tak kita pupuk ke, uh, sikap kepimpinan tersebut? Dan kedua ialah how much freedom of speech can our students have, okey? Berapa banyak kita boleh berikan apa uh, kebebasan kepada anak murid kita untuk bersuara? Yang ketiga ialah bagaimana kita nak apa kita nak berkomunikasi dengan pelajar-pelajar yang introvert ataupun mempunyai low self esteem. Yang keempat pula macam mana kita nak respon kepada pelajar yang sensitif ataupun yang memerlukan ataupun yang menghadapi kesukaran. Yang kelima ialah bagaimana kita nak laksanakan counselling kepada murid dan yang keenam ialah bagaimana kita nak membantu pelajar terutamanya untuk pelajar yang tak sedar tentang pentingnya pendidikan yang mungkin rasa tidak motiv, uh, tidak mempunyai motivasi untuk masa depan dan juga pembelajaran mereka. So ini ialah enam soalan yang kami kumpul dan soalan-soalan ini Dr. Edward akan jawab secara tidak langsung melalui perkongsian dia selama 45 minit. Jadi saya harap cikgu-cikgu ambil perhatian dan nah, sekiranya cikgu rasa ada lagi soalan yang tak terjawab ataupun masih tidak jelas, cikgu boleh tanya di ruangan komen ya. Okey, so baiklah saya tidak akan mengambil masa lebih lagi. Sekarang saya akan pass kepada Dr. Edward, dia akan kenalkan diri dia dan dia akan mulakan perkongsian dia sekarang. Okey, saya akan add dia ke uh, stream kita hari ini. Okey, Edward, are you sharing your screen? Uh, just give me a minute. Yes, go ahead. go ahead. Okay, selamat petang cikgu-cikgu. Uh, saya ialah Dr. Edward dari uh, UK. So, saya adalah seorang pakar psikologi uh, dalam bidang uh, clinical psychology dengan uh, forensic psychology. Saya ialah seorang pencara juga uh, di Coventry University uh, di mana saya actually uh, mengajar mengenai um, students' well-being. So, kanak-kanak punya uh, kesejahteraan dengan dia punya family sekali. So, that's actually my specialism. Uh, so, before I start, uh, saya ingin uh, para cikgu um, provide your opinion about what is actually a student leader. Okay, um, Janice, would you like to tell them about Mentimeter?
Okay, so cikgu-cikgu, uh, cik, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Edward ingin dapatkan uh, makluman daripada cikgu, pendapat daripada cikgu tentang apa yang cikgu tahu tentang student leader. So, diminta cikgu boleh scan QR code dalam atas screen ataupun pergi ke link Mentimeter, masukkan kod. Kalau cikgu pergi ke menti.com boleh masukkan kod yang dia, uh, tertera atas screen ataupun pergi ke link ini uh, dan berikan pendapat anda. Okay, so cikgu-cikgu uh, digalakkan ke Mentimeter sekarang. Uh, saya punya tim pun dah letak link uh, Mentimeter di ruangan komen. So, cikgu boleh klik dan berikan pendapat anda. Okay, so kita lihat sini ada silent and loud leadership. So, uh, kita akan tunggu lagi pendapat-pendapat uh, daripada cikgu, beberapa pendapat. So, Dr. Edward, you can have a look at the response on the screen as well. Ada lagi cikgu yang boleh share uh, pada pendapat cikgu. Apakah itu uh, pemimpin pelajar ataupun student leader? Dan uh, kalau kita cakap tentang student leader ni ada 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 jenis tak? Mungkin student leader contohnya pengawas ke uh, apa 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 jenis-jenis student leader yang ada contohnya di sekolah cikgu. So boleh kongsikan di bahagian mentimeter. Kalau cikgu tak boleh akses mentimeter, cikgu juga boleh kongsi di ruangan komen tentang pendapat cikgu. Apakah itu student leader dan apa jenis student leadership kepimpinan pelajar yang ada di sekolah cikgu pada pendapat cikgu ya. Okay, so kita ada lima respon. So kita boleh tunggu beberapa lagi. Or oh, Edward, you can let me know if you want me to move to the next question, yeah? Jenny, I think that's a good enough question. You can move on. Okay, I'll move to the next one. Um, dan untuk um, soalan seterusnya uh, pada pendapat cikgu, apakah kualiti-kualiti kepimpinan yang perlu ada pada seorang student leader? Okey, mungkin kita bagi lagi maybe lima saat untuk cikgu um, kongsi. Lepas tu Edward, I think the response is enough for you ya. Yeah? Yes. Okey, so kalau cikgu masih nak kongsi, you can continue to do so in the comment section. So kita ada cikgu Cikwa di sini dan cikgu Rohana juga. So Edward, I'll pass it back to you. Okey.
Okay. So, opinion cikgu, uh, feedback cikgu actually memang bagus sekali. So, anda mungkin actually membayangkan seorang pemimpin sebagai seorang yang uh, mempunyai kuasa. Uh, berkuasa atau uh, seseorang yang penting uh, seperti ahli politik atau ahli perniagaan yang berjaya. So, sebenarnya sesiapa sahaja boleh menjadi seorang pemimpin kerana seorang pemimpin hanya adalah seorang yang mempunyai sesuatu yang mendorong mereka. So, for student actually, it put, probably will be um, improving um, this, their learning experiences perhaps, uh, could improve their, uh, their student welfare, uh, su uh, the school environment. So, all these actually are missions that school leaders or student leaders might actually have. So, apakah yang menjadikan seorang pelajar sebagai pemimpin? So, sebagai contohnya, uh, seorang pemimpin perlu mempunyai kebolehan untuk mempengaruhi dalam kalangan pelajar. So, these are good influence among students. Uh, kebolehan untuk membina hubungan kerja baik dengan guru atau staff. Uh, boleh memberi kesan yang berkekalan di sekolah dan melibat dalam pembuatan uh, keputusan. So, uh, for example, let's just say um, students who want to be involved in decision making. Uh, seperti contohnya, uh, how you would like to decorate uh, a part of the school, for example. Uh, allowing students actually to decide actually what they like to do is also something that is helpful for them as well, showing that sort of initiative and leadership as well. Uh, kebolehan untuk bekerja dengan baik dalam satu pusakan, able to work as a teamwork, uh, for example, kalau uh, Cikgu actually um, is working with secondary school students, for example, uh, seperti uh, uh, Form 4 or Form 5, you will notice that there are some lessons that you can actually work in team. Uh, sebagai contohnya, um, di uh, negara yang lain seperti UK actually, uh, mereka ada uh, masalah Mas, um, seperti uh, mathematics yang mereka perlu actually selesaikan bersama. So those are some of the leadership skills that you can actually use as well. Kemahiran pengurusan masa yang baik sebagai contohnya boleh mengimbangkan komitmen. Komitmen uh, ni bermaksud uh, boleh actually um, basically able to balance out the time between your curriculum activities as well as your actual activities and that's actually really important. Bertanggungjawab dan boleh dipercayai setiap masa which basically means they are responsible and able to be reliable all the time. So that is actually what are some of the traits that we can call what is actually a student leader. But a student leader also must have a lot of different um, types of factors that could actually be instilled. So inilah ciri-ciri uh, seorang pemimpin pelajar. Sebagai contohnya, uh, um, mereka perlu ada ciri-ciri uh, seperti uh, diplomasi, uh, boleh menyelesaikan konflik, uh, empathy, kejujuran, kebolehpercayaan, creativity, penyelesaian masalah, uh, kejelasan ukapan dan maklum balas which means that able to actually clarify the expression as well as provide feedback uh, boleh menilai uh, ketabahan does, and as well kesesuaian so ini adalah ciri-ciri seorang pemimpin pelajar as well as some of the things that uh, you have mentioned as well during the Mentimeter so those are some of very good traits as well that a uh, student leader should actually have and that is actually something that could be trained as well but most of the time, actually, uh, when students actually come to you, mereka akan cakap macam ni, uh, cikgu saya tak boleh jadi leader lah ni, tak boleh jadi pemimpin. Saya ni seorang introvert. So introvert maksudnya uh, seorang yang ada uh, personality yang um, fokus uh, terhadap kendiri. Maksudnya uh, pen, mereka ni uh, digelar penilik diri. So introverts are basically people who like to focus on their thoughts what they think, how they uh, feel about something, uh, feel about their emotions rather than doing things. And most of the time we think that leaders actually uh, are always extroverted uh, and then they also need to be born as a leader as well. But what we know actually uh, from research, so Kajian Psikologi ini, kita mendapati actually pemimpin bukan seorang yang yang lahir atau bukan seorang yang uh, perlu um, certain personality traits. 
uh, basically anyone can be a leader because a leadership is something that is uh, develop, practice and learn. Maksudnya, uh, seorang so pemimpin boleh dipupuk, boleh dipraktis dan boleh diajar sekali. So, for example, uh, kalau uh, cikgu actually ada um, murid yang cakap, oh, saya ni introvert, tak bolehlah cikgu, tak boleh jadi pemimpin. Anda sebagai cikgu actually boleh, uh, um, you can teach them actually to have the ability to reflect and consider all the information before making conclusion. So, if you think about it, uh, people who actually have very high level of introvert, they need to actually think, they need to reflect Okay, merenung then um, then and, and and consider all the information before making a decision or making a conclusion. It is also important to understand that traits like uh, introvert they also have the ability to listen more and to talk, which then also makes them a good leader because they are able to make other people feel valued and feel empowered as well because they are being listened, but also to help them to give them a sense of self awareness and know their own character. So that actually helps them to reflect on their own experiences to involve as well, okay? So there are many different types of student leadership as well. And the most common one is what we know in schools are prefects. So prefects adalah uh, pengawas and most of the time kalau kita tengok dalam, uh, kalau kita tengok siapakah pemimpin di sekolah, pelajar pemimpin di sekolah, kita akan uh, kita akan uh, relate to uh, pengawas di sekolah. Then pengawas di sekolah, most of the time kita akan um, kita akan bayangkan mereka adalah uh, uh, pelajar yang membantu cikgu dalam hal disiplin. Tetapi seben sebenarnya there are very different types of student leadership as well, such as environment, well-being, and engagement. So engagement ni adalah uh, pelajar pemimpin yang fokus dalam uh, yang yang terlibat dalam aktiviti-aktiviti uh, community dan ini adalah untuk membantu mereka uh, feel the sense of connected, able to do something for the community, able to uh, share their experience and knowledge as well to the community as well. There are also environment focus type of student leaders as well and those are the students that uh, focus on the impact of their environment as well as having an understanding of the issue that involves them as a student. So, so um, for example, apakah uh, environmental factor ni atau apakah persekitaran terhadap issue? For example, mereka akan, um, they might be thinking about um, resources that is available to them or perhaps they might be thinking of how to actually improve um, eco school status for example uh atau how to actually improve um the community infrastructure so those are what we call as environmental type of uh, school leaders and those are students who actually who perhaps you might think about uh, focusing a lot more in subjects like geography or even like uh, i'm not even sure whether schools these days have kamahiran hido life skills those are also things that are really helpful to actually improve students' uh, engagement as well as their involvement in the environment. But I think in the current problem that we actually have now with the pandemic, one of the student leadership that you most likely would need is actually the well-being student leaders. So well-being student leaders are people who are able to promote um, uh, mental health uh, towards their students, able to actually um, raise awareness on anti-bully and, and other uh, welfare uh, problems as well. So well-being student leaders are extremely important as well. And kalau cikgu actually do not actually have the different types of student leadership, what you can also do in your school is to advocate the different types of student leadership, giving a good reason for students who don't like to become a pengawas, for example, to be involved in different areas of uh, student leadership. So if let's just say you manage to target uh, certain students actually that potentially have that leadership skills, how would you then want to cultivate? How would you want to, uh, bagaimana cikgu nak memupukkan uh, bakat kepimpinan, kepimpinan dalam kalangan um, 
pelajar. So on the screen here, cikgu akan nampak ialah some of the recommendation that I have for you. For example, you can actually delegate tasks to students whenever possible. So for example, uh, bayangkan cikgu actually adalah seorang cikgu yang uh, handle uh, certain persatuan atau uh, community, uh, community work. So cikgu actually boleh uh, delegate tasks pada students actually. Okay, this is activity A. Bagaimana kita nak, uh, nak, nak, nak handle activity A ini? So allowing students to take part, to able to delegate the task to them and decide what they want to do is actually something that builds not only their sense of initiative but also able to promote that sense of leadership skills that we have discussed just now. Able to formalize student leadership is really important as well. So if you think about it, most of the time in schools, we have a uh, formalized student leadership, but we have only formalized is the prefix. So pengawas atau pengawas perpustakaan, those are formalized type of student leadership. But there are many different ways as well to formalize the student leadership, including the ones like well-being uh, student leaders or environment student leaders or engagement student leaders that can actually help students to actually focus on the things that they like and passionate about to actually help them to grow as students. You can also think about providing students to teach each other how to effectively lead and advocate as well. So this basically means that kalau cikgu actually ada um, uh, pemimpin pelajar yang lebih tua, mereka boleh membantu um, pelajar lain yang lebih muda actually untuk menjadi seorang pemimpin. So from there, you are able to teach students each other how to effectively lead and advocate as well instead of a teacher teaching students how to be um, a, a leader. Also allow students actually to be innovative. Uh, we are actually at a time where students do learn how to use a lot of different technology. They are exposed to different sorts of social media. So it's allowing students actually to have the opportunity to actually um, let them be innovative, let them to do things that they, uh, they find it creative uh, for their school as well. It's actually something that's really useful and also drive their continuous interest. If you actually tell students actually that this is the only way to become a leader is through a prefect. Most of the time, students actually lost interest very quickly. They don't have that interest. And what happened is that students actually felt like, mm, this is not for me. Jadi pengawas is not for me. I don't like it. So that's actually something that we need to be very careful in terms of developing leadership skills. Encourage students leaders to recognize and recruit students for future leadership position is also a good thing. Sebagai so, contoh um, uh, when I was in school, for example, uh, dalam persatuan or, or whatever, most of the time, kalau ada uh, siapa jadi ketua persatuan atau penolong persatuan uh, and all those kind of thing, uh, most of the time, kita ada voting system macam tu. But that should not just end in persatuan or in community. That could also be in other forms of um, types of leadership. Like, for example, kalau cikgu ada uh, sistem pengawas, for example, Bagaimana ketua pengawas tu uh, train the next ketua pengawas or the penolong ketua pengawas, for example. Or if let's just say you have well-being student leaders, how do you teach another well-being student to actually be that leader? How will you encourage them to actually to be one, to encourage them to actually lead other people as well? So this is about providing students with the support uh, to foster community and encourage them actually to recognize and recruit students for future leadership positions as well. And finally, develop student leadership outcome measures. Most of the time, kalau cikgu uh, tanya uh, student, uh, pendapat maker, apakah seorang pemimpin pelajar? And uh, you will find it very interesting because student juga boleh um, membantu guru juga untuk mem, mem, um, to come up with a set of criteria in terms of what they think is a good leader as well. And that also will make them feel like they are taking part in building the community, building the community in the school as well. Okay. So, uh, Janice, would you like to help with this? 
Okay, so um, so sekarang, uh, thank you uh, Dr. Edel for the sharing. So sekarang uh, kita nak tanya pendapat cikgu lagi. Um, cikgu rasa kenapa uh, cikgu perlu promote student leadership di sekolah cikgu? Tak kisahlah sama ada di persatuan ke, dalam kelas ke, ataupun mana-mana bahag area yang cikgu rasa perlukan student leadership. So mohon cikgu pergi ke Mentimeter tadi, sama juga QR code yang sama, link yang sama. Um, dan berikan pendapat anda ya dan saya akan tunjukkan pendapat di skrin sekejap lagi so rakan saya pun dah letak link di bahagian komen ok so mungkin cikgu boleh berikan pendapat cikgu tentang kenapa perlunya kita pupuk student leadership di sekolah kita kita akan tunggu satu minit untuk dapatkan pendapat daripada cikgu sama ada dalam, dalam ruangan komen ataupun melalui mentimeter. Okay, Dr. Edward, so if you can see, uh, there are some responses on the screen already. Okay, thank you very much. I could carry on. Thank you. All right. Okay, cikgu mungkin akan uh, bertanya. Okay, saya ni sangat busy kat sekolah. Sekarang kita ada pandemic. Saya tak ada masa nak buat apa ni, uh, promote student leadership. What is the point? Okay, the thing is that kalau kita tengok uh, kalau kita tengok dari segi psikologi, uh, pandemik seperti ini actually boleh actually um, uh, provide negatif, uh, kesan negatif kepada murid. Dan sebagai contohnya, um, sekarang pandemik, uh, sekolah sudah tutup, tak ada face to face, uh, cikgu mungkin tak ada uh, internet yang baik, uh, Uh, student pun tak ada internet yang baik atau tak ada um, komunikasi seperti laptop. So, all this actually are really uh, important factors to think about in terms of how they can actually affect them. And if you think about it as well, most of the time, students uh, who, who have a phone, mereka akan uh, tengok social media seperti uh, Instagram, Snapchat, WhatsApp, TikTok, apa, apalah benda tu and they will look at COVID-19 materials, for example. So this increased uh, usage of social media and looking at COVID-19 materials actually were linked to high levels of anxiety. Uh, Mika can feel a, a bit powerless, will feel that they need to actually catastrophizing the situations as well. So catastrophizing situations basically means that they will overblown the situation. They might be thinking, using a phone will cause me to have COVID or walking on the street will cause me to have COVID. So that will actually make them feel more panicking, uh, feel them more anxious about the issues as well. And then there are also issues in terms of students who might also uh, not listen to the news and they actually might have an increased risk of infection because they don't actually take care of their, their hygiene. And that also increases their, their, their stress and then might actually feel uh, trauma as well. And then for some students who spend a lot of time on excessive screen time, because we know that teaching students now involving phone, involving laptop, which means that they now see a lot of screen on TV, on the monitor, on the computer. And that also will affect their sleep pattern. Uh, they will have very poor sleep. They might also have sedentary habits, which basically means that um, not moving around, like to sit down, watch TV, laid back, Uh, that will also create them either having mental health problems as well as physical health issues as well. And because everyone is now constrained at home, that also will create this lack of routine. And if you think about it, most teenagers or, um, or more older um, students actually might find themselves uh, locking themselves in, the in their rooms for even days or weeks, refusing to shower or even leave their beds. And that also will cause depression and anxiety and having issues, difficulty in adjusting back to normal life when school resumes. So all this actually will cause problem 
to them, not only for their own mental health, but also causing them to actually learn uh, and able to progress in their academic. And this is actually something that we should be concerned of because students actually will be far back behind from what they are learning uh, instead of growing to be a better one. But the reality is that teachers do not have the time to monitor each student. Because if let's just say you have 40 or 50 students in a class, it's very unlikely that you can monitor each student all the time. You don't have time as well for your own work. You don't even have time to even take care of your family. So this is actually something to think about in terms of the reality. So the, the, the problem is that now we do actually need student leaders, student leaders who are able to help you and student leaders who can help themselves as well as other students who are in need. And therefore, there is a, a, a great importance that you should actually promote well-being student leaders to actually help other students to cope as well, okay? So when we think about how to help students, well-being students, we obviously need to train students. But as a teacher, you can also use this as a, uh, as a way to actually help yourself, your family, as well as your student. So this is actually what we call as the psychological first aid. Uh, in, in Malay, we call it as Petorongan Cermas Psychology. So Petorongan Psychology, Petorongan um, Cermas Psychology ini adalah dicipta untuk membantu sesiapa saja dalam memberi pertolongan terapi mental kepada sesiapa yang mempunyai masalah dengan kesehatan mental. So kesehatan mental ni bermaksud orang yang, for example, ada stress. Stress is already a mental health issue and they don't need to have things like depression or anxiety. Uh, dan fungsi utama adalah untuk memberi pertolongan agar individu yang trauma akibat isu seperti COVID-19 dapat kembali melakukan aktiviti harian seperti biasa kembali. Dan pendekatan ini boleh digunakan oleh sesiapa saja termasuk individu yang berisiko tinggi un uh, untuk terdedah dengan masalah kesihatan mental. Maksudnya, this particular uh, PFA adalah suitable uh, sesuai untuk sesiapa saja yang ada risiko yang rendah ataupun orang yang mempunyai risiko yang tinggi akibat daripada COVID-19. Dan objektif ini adalah untuk mengurangkan tekanan emosi akibat uh, krisis kehidupan, membantu uh, student memenuhi keperluan asas semasa krisis dan memberi sokongan kepada pelajar supaya kembali kepada fungsi optima. So ini adalah uh, uh, fungsi utama uh, pertolongan cemas psikologi dan sebagai cikgu, cikgu boleh gunakan uh, dengan cikgu-cikgu lain, cikgu boleh guna dengan uh, murid, cikgu boleh menggunakan teknik ini untuk men, uh, melatih um, uh, pemimpin pelajar yang fokus on well-being. Cikgu boleh juga menggunakan um, um, teknik ini dengan keluarga anda ataupun dengan rakan-rakan anda juga. Okay? So this is actually a very, very useful tool in terms of how to promote well-being in general. And this is also really important, especially when we don't have enough uh, resources in terms of giving sokongan psychology to everyone. So what is actually PFA? PFA uh, is a very simple uh, steps. It only uses three steps, which is basically listen, protect, and connect. Dengar, lindung, dan hubungkan. So as a teacher, you are in an excellent position to help your students during and after a crisis such as COVID. Cikgu adalah di, uh, uh, mempunyai posisi yang agak unik kerana cikgu actually boleh membantu murid-murid uh, uh, seperti uh, krisis seperti sekarang, COVID, ataupun selepas uh, COVID sudah improve. So just as you help students connect with appropriate academic and counseling services under normal circumstances, you are in an excellent position to help your students return to school, stay in school, continue to learn and return to their usual uh, school-based activities after such event. Why is this really important? COVID-19 do actually cause a lot of problem as well. And that actually would have students focusing on helping their parents uh, to work. Uh, they might not feel motivated to go back to school after a long period of time and they might not even want to learn. And therefore, having this 
um, technique is able to help them actually to return back to school, able to be motivated back to do their work as well. Student leaders could also use this technique to actually help their peers as well. So this is also something that you could think about how you want to train them as well as to use, your, use it for yourself to help other students. So the first part is listen. So how do we listen? Kalau kita tengok, um, kalau kita tanya, uh, how do we experience when we are anxious? We will think about all these things. So bila kita uh, anxious, kita uh, mungkin akan, uh, kita mungkin cepat marah, kita mungkin akan uh, rasa gementar, kita mungkin akan rasa uh, ada simptom macam sakit perut, uh, kita mungkin, uh, kaki kita mungkin akan getar, uh, mungkin kita akan rasa, ah, saya perlu keluar, uh, tak boleh lah, you know, uh, duduk kat rumah all the time, uh, your your body or muscle might feel tight, maksudnya, uh, 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 badan cikgu cik mungkin akan feel very tense, okay? You're feeling very hot and sweaty, not because of the weather, but because you feel really, really tense up, okay? Uh, you breathe really quickly, uh, and then after that, you also might have feeling really dizzy, headache, and all these kind of things. So these are very common reactions that we will experience when we are anxious. And if we can experience this as a teacher, we can also expect that students also will experience this as well. It's very difficult for students actually to manage this or to handle this when they are stressed. They don't know sometimes what they are feeling and they also don't know why they are feeling like that. So for you to be able to understand this is a good indication of whether they are feeling stressed, whether they are feeling anxious or not. Okay. So how does this affect your student? So if you think about it, COVID-19 actually will affect students very differently. And this obviously really depends on who you are working with. So I know actually some cikgu, uh, mungkin you actually work with primary school students, uh, sekolah rendah, ataupun cikgu akan mungkin work on teenagers as well. So different students actually will react very differently. Dengan uh, murid dari sekolah rendah, Mereka mungkin akan jadi uh, very clingy, which means that mereka all the time uh, wants to be with you. Uh, they might also feel very worried about the, the problem. Uh, for example, they will say, uh, cikgu, 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 uh, what will happen after this, you know, uh, after COVID? Will people die? Will I have it? Uh, do I need to cover my face? Do I need to wash my face every time? Do I, can I not talk to my friends? These are signs of worry. They might even show tantrums as well. I don't want to go to school, you know, I don't want to go to school, you cannot force me. So these are what we call as tantrums. Uh, students also might have mood swings, uh, mood swings, irritable, restlessness. Uh, they might also have very poor eating habits or very poor diet habits. And that is also a very common reaction because of their mood swings as well. Um, some younger children might even have bed wetting which basically means that they might feel very stressed and they might wait, wet the bed. Bed wetting is more common with younger children and that's a sign of stress as well. Uh, they might even walk at night, which means that uh, they're sleeping and then they walk at night and that is also an indication that they are feeling stressed. They might also have difficulty concentrating or sleeping and this is common regardless of all ages, especially with teenagers they might not be able to concentrate. It's not because they sleep late or they're not able to, um, uh, or they have done something late at night. Sometimes it's truly because of the effect of stress. And when you think about it, Bila Chekgu is feeling stressed, you too will feel difficulty sleeping as well. You probably didn't sleep well. You managed to only sleep a few hours because you're stressed. And it's very common as well as Chekgu because you actually work a lot of things on your schedule and because of that you have very limited sleep and when you have limited sleep you do actually have concentration problem or stress problem that can then increase that level as well and goes same goes with students as well students have very high level of difficulties uh, concentrating because their sleep is disrupted already uh, sometimes they don't know when is day when is night because they're always in their room uh, or they might also just not go out at all and that also will affect them so think about that 
and how you feel and how you will react to stress and think about how other students uh, that you actually have will react to that as well. And as a result of that, most of the time uh, with teenagers, uh, you will feel that they are very quickly to get angry and they're very quickly to get frustrated. And that is a very normal reaction from teenagers. And as a result of that, unfortunately, most of the time, you will become the easy target or the parents will become the easy target. They will start shouting at you. They will start being argumentative with you. And again, this is actually something that you need to understand how to be a bit more compassionate with them, try to understand where they are coming from because of the current situation. So if I were to illustrate to you, why do we feel stress? So think the stress here is like this stress bucket. So stress bucket, uh, Bali, um, Bali stress, okay, stress bucket. So uh, bayangkan uh, Bali stress ini ada um, lubang di bawah itu, okay? And you will see that those are usually uh, holes that allows us to actually release from our stress, able to cope from our stress. So when we feel anxious, we able to cope with our stress because we are, we are able to talk to someone, we are able to relax, we are able to do something else. And these are very normal, healthy things to do. So how do we feel stress? For example, stress could come from many things. For example, you could uh, lost your key today, your car could break down, or it could be everyday life problem. For example, you might be sick, your child might be sick. You might have issues at work that's always ongoing. You have home concerns as well. And you have children to take care as well. Those are every life problem that makes you feel anxious and stressed. You might also have major life events. For example, someone died uh, because of COVID or someone died because of being sick or old. Uh, you might actually have divorce. Uh, you might have newly married as well, and you might even lost a job previously, or someone else lost a job that also will affect you as well. So these are different types of varieties that can actually affect you to feel stress. But what does it look like with children? With children, actually, it's a bit different. Students actually feel stress very differently. Their stress could be, I can't see my friends today. It could also be, I can't keep up to my routine. This routine is really important for children because they are used to early morning, go to school, come back in the afternoon, do their homework, repeat. That's a routine. But now actually with the COVID, you don't actually see that routine. And that actually causes stress as well. And there is also things like everyday life problems. For example, getting sick, getting cold, having an argument with the parents, with the siblings that can also feel stress. Other major life events such as death in the family as well, divorce, parents' divorce, loss of friendship or separation. So kalau cikgu tengok ni, ini adalah paling stress. And most of the time, when we, when, when we think about how uh, with, with students, kita selalu bayangkan students boleh actually uh, uh, cope dengan stress, dengan baik. Tetapi the, the, the fact is that they don't. So if you actually picture this stress bucket, the, the basic level here that you can see is what we call as a stress level, which basically means that kebolehan untuk menerima stress. Then most of the time, kita semua ada some sort of level untuk um, keupayaan untuk menerima uh, uh, stress. Tetapi kalau kita ada banyak different stress, so different stress sources that comes in, we actually have what we call as the buffer zone or the zone of penampan. Okay, so this zone penampan actually is basically your ability actually to take in additional stress. And most of the time we can handle the stress. But what happens if that you have overload of stress, more stress that comes in? So when you have more stress to come in, you have to release enough water out from the pail and you must actually have coping me mechanism for it. So that's actually all the little uh, little knobs that you can see actually. That is actually where you actually have to teach students how to cope as well in terms of all these different uh, stresses that they might actually have. Okay. So, uh, Janice, would you like to handle this? 
Yeah, what well, I was thinking, uh, maybe do you want the teachers to share in the comment section uh, only so that we can save a little bit more time, then you can move on to your next slide. Yes, that's, that's, yeah. that's a very good idea. Okay, let's go yeah. on to the next slide. So if you actually have, um, basically as a teacher, you do actually have the opportunity to listen and observe and note any changes in students. And this could be from their behavior and or mood uh, their school performance, their interaction with their schools and schoolmates and their teachers, how they participate in school-based activities, behaviors at home that parents discuss with you. So for example, you might actually have students actually that might behave very differently uh, uh, during the event or after the event of COVID. So sebagai contohnya, uh, when, you, when, you, when, when we have the lockdown since March and then the school return back to normal, you probably can notice is that there are some students who have changes in their behavior or mood. So what we know that is against psychology is that most of the time, uh, pelajar perempuan akan uh, mendalami uh, emosi mereka. They will not talk about how they feel. Uh, they will rather keep it away, shy it away. For boys, actually, it's very different as well boys express their emotion really out loud. How they express it, usually it's, it's ways that we will find it, uh, it's a disciplinary issue. They will shout, they will be aggressive in school, um, they might behave violently. And these are signs that we can tell that these students actually needed help and not so much of having psychology issues as well. Some students also might have um, depression symptoms as well. And depression symptoms could be loss of appetite or poor diet. They might not feel like they want to eat. Uh, they might not even want to talk to anyone uh, when, when they usually talk to a lot of friends, for example. Um, they might actually feel uh, really anxious and cannot focus, cannot concentrate. They always feel sleepy in class. So these are some of the indications that you can look out for in terms of uh, how students change. And you can then understand that that is an indication that could be a problem to students if you don't actually help, okay? A lot of times as well, some students, especially in some demographics, they also have problems with helping, uh, uh, so helping uh, they might actually need to help their parents as well because some parents lose their job. So they also have to work to actually support their, their family as well. And these also are things that also could affect their studies. And therefore, it's really important that we listen and observe of and note any changes as well. Okay. So the next one is protect. How can you make students feel better? Most of the time, the first way what you could do is actually to provide opportunities for your student to feel expressive, to be expressive. And expressive here, which means that allowing them to express through uh, art form, through writing, even sharing their own music is actually something that's able to express themselves. Talking to you is also a way of expressing to yourself. But you also need to remember as school teachers, you cannot press uh, students actually to tell you what's happening. Students must come um, on your own to are uh, able to actually trust and able to talk to you about the problem as well. When students actually have questions about the situation, try to answer questions simply and honestly clearing up the confusion students may actually have about what has actually happened. And this is more important, especially with younger children. So this is, for example, uh, your family where you have younger children or you actually might have uh, children from uh, primary school. They actually might ask you a question like, what is COVID-19? What is this virus? The best way to actually help them is to give them a concrete answer, but it's also simple able to tell them that simple, concrete answer, enable them to actually understand uh, what is the problem. So for example, how to tell them, uh, they might ask you, uh, a younger kid might ask you, uh, what is COVID-19? You can say that it's a virus that makes people feel sick, okay? That's a very straightforward, simple answer. And you can actually add on, but basically try not to complex the answers as well. 
But that is also the same as well with older children. Older children, most of the time, they will be thinking, I know what it is. You know, I know what is COVID-19. I read from this news and I read from that news. But the fact is that as children grow older, they do not like to listen to their teachers or their peer, uh, to their, or their parents. They like to listen more is to their peers. And therefore, it's important as teachers to understand where does the information comes from. But you also need to remember that not to let your student know that they are alone in their reaction to the event. So you can also share how you feel about the event as well, making them feel that they are not alone. And then talk to students about what is being done by the school and the community to keep everyone safe from harm. So what does the school do? What do the community in their, uh, in their area does as well? That actually able to help them be uh, connected and understand the situation better as well. Other than that, it's also important to maintain daily routine activities and structure with clear expectation, consistent rules, and immediate feedback, and also limit unnecessary changes. And this is actually something that you could also work with your parents. For example, uh, parents might actually ask you for advice. Uh, I don't know how to actually make this better for my kid. Um, one of the good ways is actually teaching the, the parents as well for yourself is to maintain a routine for the students. Students need to actually have a routine. And the reason why they respond very well to school, because in school, they know from 8 to 9, this is uh, English lesson. From uh, 9 to 10, is science lesson and so on and so forth. So having that, uh, that kind of flexible and some sort of schedule help them actually to maintain focus and able to actually be more consistent with what they need to do. But at the same time, because we are limited by certain things like technology, it's also important to make adjustments to the homework to be sensitive to the current level of functioning. So you might be thinking of how could I adjust the work so that they actually will be able to understand bet better. Students also might have a problem with understanding information. So it's good to provide them in important information from reputable sources. So for example, students don't want you to tell them what is wrong. So you can do is you can give them a piece of news article. These are a very good information about the current situation. Read it and then you can tell me what you think about it. You can also reframe the anxieties or discomfort as well. What does reframing and anxieties discomfort means? For example, if you, you, if you tell students, come on, don't feel anxious anymore, you'll be okay, don't think about it. That kind of um, advice is not helpful. Students actually need to have skills to reframe the anxieties. So one way you can do it is you can say, okay, uh, one way that is helpful for me is to do a breathing exercise. Uh, would you like to breathe with me doing this breathing exercise? Then you can do it with them to actually help them as well. Or you can also think about other things to ask them. For example, you can say, oh, when you are feeling anxious or feeling discomfort, what usually helps you? Able to actually make students feel that they have that uh, opportunity to think about what actually makes them feel better, makes them feel not only like an adult, but also able to help themselves and others as well. And then also ask them to questions about what they think about the situation. Most of the time, students are not being asked about what they think about the situation. They always depend on adults. But part of being making students as a leader and taking the initiative to understand the problem, especially with teenagers, is to ask them that question and allowing them to explain it back to you in your own words as well. Okay. So what about Connect then? Connect is basically... Being aware of your own thoughts, your own feelings and reactions about the event, which can be seen and after, uh, can be seen and can affect your students as well. So how you cope and behave during or after COVID-19 will influence how your students will cope and behave because they will watch you uh, both verbally and non-verbal uh, cues as well. And therefore, it's really important that you monitor your conversations that students actually may hear and also acknowledge the difficulty of situation because everyone actually will have very different difficulty. But understanding that difficulty helps students to connect with you better as well. Try to also normalize your feeling. Try to tell them that what they experience is not what they experience alone. Everyone else is experiencing as well. Encourage other students also to identify and use positive coping strategies to help them to uh, to help them after the event, but also help students 
problem solved to get through each day successfully. So if something that make them feel demotivated or they can't actually study properly uh, or they don't understand a certain things, teach them to work together in terms of how can they learn better, especially if the student is doing SPM or SDPM. Help your students set small goals, small doable goals, and share their achievement with their students. What does this mean? So for example, if you, are, you have a WhatsApp group with your students, you can tell students, take a photo uh, to demonstrate what you have achieved today and share it in the, the WhatsApp group. That way, you are encouraging everyone to be more positive, to able to actually share the goal that they have done something. So for example, one of the goals that you can do is that, um, complete uh, 100 words essay and stick a picture, you know, then they can take a picture after they have done and they can share it with a group. Or in, in terms of community work, you can tell them, uh, take a photo in terms of helping another person and share it with a group. That also makes them feel not only positive about themselves because they are helping others, but also able to make sure that they too are connected with people. Most of the time, because of COVID, the students actually feel very isolated from their friends, very disconnected. And therefore, as teachers, you can actually help them to feel more connected back again, but doing in ways that that is able, that that is something that they could do. Okay, so that find ways also to be helpful to the classroom, to the school and the community. Lastly, actually, what you need to remember is that PFA is just a first aid. You still need to seek for professional help yourself. If you yourself have feelings of being overwhelmed or overly stressed that you don't, that, go, that doesn't go away over time. And you also need to remember that if you're not sure about how to handle a situation with a student or family member, Asking help from your from other fellow teachers, from your friends, is also something that is really useful. Okay, so this is also some other posts that I can actually share with you. These are free from the government, um, and you can also share this with your students. Uh, they could call uh, them if they actually need any support. Things that the school counselors cannot do, they can actually do that as well. Okay, right. So. Uh, is there any questions that I can help? Um, there's only one question from Chek Gu Wong, uh, whereby she asked just now, um, how do we um, how do we support students to kurangkan their stress um, if they are unwilling to communicate or talk? Uh, most of the time, students actually cannot communicate or talk. It's because they feel like either they are shy or they just don't know how to communicate it. It's not that they don't want to say what's the problem. It's because they don't know how to describe the problem. So the best way to do this is you can ask them to go through an art class, express it through art. You can also ask them to write a letter, a letter to themselves or a letter to you. Uh, you can also ask them to write it in a form of an essay Express it in that way allows that actually to help them feel less stressed, less emotional, and able to actually help them to cope better. Okay, I hope that actually answer uh, your question, uh, Miss Wong. Yep, I think yeah. So uh, either it's verbally or non-verbally, there are many ways that uh, we can uh, encourage students to express their feelings. Thank you so much, Dr. Edward, for sharing. Um, there's no, uh, so far there's not uh, no questions from the teachers. So uh, dear teachers, if you have anything else you would like to ask, uh, you can continue to do so in the comment section. Uh, we're a little bit over time, so we can't really address all your questions today. Tapi apa yang kami boleh buat ialah sekiranya cikgu ada soalan ke apa, boleh hubungi kami dan kami akan cuba untuk dapatkan uh, pendapat daripada Dr. Edward ataupun Dr. Edward boleh guide us to the right uh, person that we can gain, uh, get the info from lah. Sorry, Janice, I just want to answer the questions that have already been given uh, in the mm. beginning, yeah? It's going to be a very quick one, sorry. So one of the questions that I have is how much freedom of speech can students give to air their views? This is student leaders. Now, student leaders uh, should understand that they do actually have that freedom to air those views. But it's also important to understand that all their views also must have consequences, just as just like adults. We don't say things without any consequences. 
And therefore, students also must understand that whatever they say must also have consequences to remember as well. And so, but you also don't want to encourage them to air those wheels because that actually helps them to critically think and be innovative as well. So one of the good parameters to think about is to guide your students in how they air their wheels as well, able to actually make them feel safe, but able to make it constructive as well. That is the key of how uh, most of the time you can actually guide your students to talk. You might also ask how to deal with introvert students and low self-esteem students. I think the my comment to Mrs. Wong actually just uh, Miss Wong just now is actually something that could be also be helpful just now. How do we respond to a student's cry for help uh, or sensitive towards students who are struggling and outside of the classroom? The best way to do this is actually to listen to the students, able to actually understand what is exactly the problem that they are facing is the first thing that you need to do before you can actually help them. Able to understand that, able to help you to connect them with other students who also might have the issue and also to help them actually to build that sense of confidence that everything will be okay. You also asked is that uh, about one, 101 counseling, one-to-one -one counseling, I think, how is it saying too much? When is it saying too much? In terms of counseling, most of the time, it's not about saying too much. It's about listening it. If you think that you are the type that say too much, then you're not really helping the student. Student wants to be heard and student also wants to actually feel like they're an adult, especially teenagers. So it's really important to actually allow them that they are being listened, but also later then comment about what they actually say about it. How do we help students um, uh, who are not interested in education or, you know, okay, how do students, uh, how to actually encourage students who are not motivated to study? One of the best way actually to do is actually to think about first, what are they interested in? Students most of the time are not interested in school lessons is because it's something that they cannot change, they cannot do, they cannot be creative. But asking them to learn something in a creative way, which they like, helps them to feel motivated. Another one you can do is also to try to help them to apply what they have learned in different settings as well. For example, if let's just say you are teaching a particular subject, how can they apply that to another person? Perhaps you might be thinking of teaching another student or teaching that to a community or perhaps having a poster to teach students about it. Those are some creative ways, even using uh, social media like TikTok or even um, things that they're really creative helps them to be more motivated to learn better as well, okay? So I hope that actually answers uh, some of the earlier questions that you actually uh, have. Okay, sorry, Jenny. Yeah, uh, one, yeah, one last question, uh, Edward. I uh, just want to know, is there like a manual that we can like learn more about uh, psychological first aid that we can find online? Um, that you think is reliable for us to refer to? Oh, yes. Um, so WHO has come up with their own first aid, but that is a general uh, first psychological first aid. Uh, the one that I'm teaching here actually is much more focusing for education purposes. So you can also use that if you would like, actually, for the entire situation. And that actually helps the community as well. Mm, okay, so uh, we will look into it and maybe we can we can put it on the folder for the teachers to refer to if they need to, yeah? Okay. All right, I think that's about it, Edward. Thank you so much uh, for your sharing today uh, about psychological first aid. Kalau cikgu-cikgu lihat uh, apa yang Dr. Edward kongsi hari ini, kita sebenarnya ada aktiviti yang kita boleh terapkan secara tidak langsung dalam kita punya PDTC online bersama pelajar to encourage them, to make them feel protected. Like uh, when, when Dr. Edward talked about... Um, um, teaching them how to acknowledge their anxieties and all. Maybe check with check with or counselor, counselor yang ada di sini boleh 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 consider uh, as one of the activity is to teach your students maybe simple breathing exercise when they feel anxious during your lessons uh, or some other activities that you can do as well. Okay, okay. So um, we were gonna end soon. So uh, Edward, I will take over from here. Is that okay? Yes. Go ahead. Okay, 
So kalau cikgu lihat di sini ada beberapa cadangan yang cikgu hadir hari ini yang kita boleh cadangkan. Cikgu boleh kongsikan pengisian webinar hari ini kepada rakan-rakan uh, ada sama ada di sekolah ke ataupun di sekeliling anda ke um, dan uh, slide yang Dr. Edward ada hari ini dan kita juga akan cari manual daripada WHO. Kita akan masukkan dalam folder yang saya dah tulis di sini iaitu LNS underscore student leadership. So semua bahan mengenai um, uh, semua slide yang ada tentang perkongsian hari ini kita akan upload ya at the end of the session. Yang kedua ialah kami galakkan cikgu untuk wujudkan student leader um, uh, especially for uh, students well-being. Um, cikgu will not clear is it? Um, is it better now? Okay so kami juga galakkan uh, cikgu untuk wujudkan kumpulan pelajar yang boleh bantu cikgu sokong anda untuk um, jaga uh, kesejahteraan rakan-rakan mereka. So this is something that maybe you can work with the, within your classroom or within your own class kalau anda seorang guru tingkatan you can actually identify students who are emotionally strong and can be a support for the peers. And yang ketiga, yang ketiga ialah cikgu boleh cuba gunakan PFA yang kita kongsi hari ini sama ada kepada murid cikgu ke, kepada keluarga cikgu ke dan kalau cikgu lihat, uh, bila cikgu lihat kembali slide aktiviti-aktiviti dalam learn, connect and protect ada beberapa yang cikgu boleh take it out and terapkan dalam lesson cikgu. Mungkin bila you buat lesson online ataupun dalam WhatsApp that is one of the activity like we take care of the emotions first, get them to share what they feel before they go into learning. Okay, ataupun cikgu boleh uh, gunakan aktiviti ini untuk laksanakan ziarah cakna online lah melalui WhatsApp ataupun Telegram. Dan sekiranya cikgu perlukan apa-apa bantuan ataupun sokongan, you can always reach out to us. Kami ada di Facebook dan YouTube dan email juga, uh, cikgu boleh email kami di enquiry at myevolution.com dan um, ini ialah link untuk cikgu isi borang maklum balas Um, cikgu boleh scan QR code ataupun uh, link kawan saya akan bagi di ruangan komen. Selepas cikgu dah isi orang maklum balas, um, cikgu akan peroleh isi je daripada kami. Dan sebenarnya dalam borang maklum balas, kami pun ada tanya sekiranya cikgu ada minat tak nak join kalau kami adakan PLC online yang tertutup uh, untuk kumpulan cikgu yang berminat lah untuk kita bincang dengan lebih mendalam macam mana kita boleh bangunkan student leader dan macam mana kita mungkin dalam uh, PLC itu kita boleh praktis juga uh, mengguna apa, mengaplikasikan protect uh, apa PFA yang kita belajar hari ini. So sekiranya cikgu berminat untuk join PLC tersebut, cikgu boleh tandakan di borang maklum balas juga. Okay. So itu sahaja untuk hari ini cikgu. So thank you so much. Kami harap perkongsian hari ini sedikit sebanyak dapat membantu cikgu dalam komunikasi cikgu bersama anak murid anda. Tapi cikgu mesti juga ingat yang paling penting juga ialah kesejahteraan cikgu-cikgu di sini. Pastikan emosi anda terjaga, uh, kesejahteraan keluarga anda terjaga dan sama-sama kita take care of our children's well-being as well. Membantangkan sekarang semua dah berada di rumah. Okay. So jangan lupa untuk isi borang maklum balas. Sekian itu sahaja daripada kami. Thank you so much.